Hey everyone, it's Craig here with a new feature for you. And to be honest, we launched this a few days ago, but it was a soft launch. There were a couple things that I wanted to add. We prefer to be best rather than first. So we wanted to add some things to differentiate us from the competition. One of the big ones being, um, you won't find too many CSV imports where you can add multiple images to each post, but we pulled it off and I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a minute. Um, the what, here's what it's about, okay? Import CSV is for those agencies or even individual accounts who have a ton of content they wanna to add to their queue and they don't wanna do it one at a time. So this allows you to do a bulk import just by filling out some simple information on a spreadsheet and uploading it to Socialmonials. We parse it out and figure out what to do with it and uh, based on your direction, we'll create a nice manicured queue for you that you can go in um, there's even some other features that help you like hold it just to so you can make sure that it looks the way you want it to look before it goes out and even before it even gets routed to your boss, right? So I'm going to show you how to work this. There's a brand new tab called import that you'll see in your publisher now. And when you go to the import tab, there's a lot to take in here, but let's take, let's take it one step at a time. The first step is to download the example CSV file. And we've created an example spreadsheet just so you can open this up and edit it. It's very important that you don't change this too much, okay? Here's the parts you can change. Everything below these column headings here, basically the first row of the um, spreadsheet, those are what you can change. And we've given you some sample posts. There's five different sample posts with some different variations. Um, and there's columns that are defined right here. So I'm going to go back here to explain what each of these columns mean. So now that you've got your downloaded example CSV, I want you to go through this the first time you do this and just make sure you're following all the rules. Because if the rules aren't met for your um, file, then when you upload it, we're going to generate an error log that will tell you exactly what you did wrong on each row. That's another feature we wanted to add that's just a little better than the other guys, right? Now we do the um, troubleshooting for you and tell you exactly what went wrong on what row, but why not just get it perfect the first time? And to do that, just go through each of these rules for each of the columns. Let's do that now. The first column is called message. This is actually an optional column in Socialmonials. If you wanna have a post with just a picture or just a link, you can do that with Socialmonials leave the message blank by all means it will still work um, some of the uh, competitors we have um, it will generate an error message if you try to do that now this is the same thing as the big message field you see on our publisher so whatever you would normally have typed there type it there the next column is called link and that is the same um, field that you would normally see on our publisher that's called add a link so if you want to attach a link to your post just add that website URL in that column and it will attach that uh, URL to your post. Um, the third column is image URL and the image URL is just that. You need to find an image um, website address or URL that is publicly accessible. That's the most important thing. So if you have a picture in your Google Drive but it's not publicly accessible, then it's probably not going to work with our upload because our server can't access it. So a good way to test it is to just grab that URL, open up a private window and paste it in there and make sure that the private window can access it when you're not logged into your um, Google Drive account or wherever this image is. And if you can access it in a private window, you can access it within our upload feature. So one thing to comment on here, if you enter a URL, uh, for an image in the image column, you cannot also add a video URL. So it's one or the other. Um, most of the networks only allow us to upload one media type at a time. So if you do enter a video, then do not enter an image in the image URL. What we have just added though is the ability to add multiple images. You can add four images to your bulk upload. And the way you do that is you put all four images in the one field in that image URL column and separate them with a comma. 
but please do not add a space before or after that comma. It just needs to be one string, otherwise it will give you an error message when you try to upload it. So if you have four different images, it should have four URLs with a comma between each one with no spaces. The fourth column is the video URL, and this is a URL of your raw video file. The reason I say raw video file is, if you take a YouTube page URL and try to use it here, it's going to fail. It cannot be a page where your video is located or embedded into, it needs to be the actual video file hosted somewhere online that our server can access. So it's the kind of the same rules as the image URL. If you've got some video on your Google Drive that is not publicly accessible, our server won't be able to access it. One great way to tell if you've got the right URL is if it ends in like a .mp4 or has any kind of extension that is a video extension, you're on the right track. It's a video file. But if it ends in like .html um, or .php or like, you're clearly looking at a page versus a video. So once that is followed, you can move on to the final step here, which is to save your final file as a .csv and you're ready to upload. And the reason we point that out is if you save it as, like let's say you open this in Excel or um, if you're an Apple user, you open it in Numbers, you have to export it as a CSV or do a save as CSV because if it converts it to a .numbers or a .xls, then you need to make sure you don't save it as a .xls because our system only can read a CSV file. So it'll warn you of that if you try to do it. I'm just, I want you to have a perfect one the first time to avoid frustration. One comment before we leave here, let's say you do have a YouTube video you wanna share. It's not that you can't share it, you just can't share it here. What I would do, and I do this all the time, if I have a video that I wanna share that I've already hosted on YouTube, I'll add it as my link. So just type out your message about the video, and in the link column, add the full YouTube URL for that video. Because when you post it to the social networks, they're pretty good about pulling in all the relevant information about your video. So it'll have a nice um, preview image and uh, preview title and description as well. So it's not that you can't do it, it's just you need to use the link if it's not an actual video file that you're linking to in the video URL. Without further ado, let's go and customize our CSV. So we've already downloaded this, um, actually have we? So I'm gonna download this again. So here is what it looks like. We have five different posts with um, four, I believe it's four, let's see, one, two, three, yes. We have four different columns. Let's go through each one. Uh, we've already defined what each one of those are, but here are five different posts, just as examples of acceptable formats. You'll notice that all five of these have messages, but only three of them have links added, which is fine. This one has no link or image URL. And by the way, if you don't attach anything, that's okay. You can have just a message if you want to include that. Um, and as we move over to the right, you can see this one does have a video URL. And notice that we have a .mp4 at the end, so we know it's an acceptable format. All of our images have like a .jpg or even a .png will indicate that it's just fine. And also note that none of these have a video and an image because that would generate an error. So I'm gonna do that just so you can see what it looks like when you do something wrong. So we're gonna add an image and a video to row number three, which is our second post. And right here, I would probably wanna change this, like great Mashable article. Just add whatever message you would normally enter in the message field and go ahead and export it to CSV. So let's call this demo. Now that that's done, we wanna go back into the import feature and we need to upload it. So all I'm gonna do now is choose that file from my downloads. Next step is to choose the social profiles. 
So if you want this to go out, to, it's going to automatically default to the same profiles that you normally send to, um, but you can add any of these different profiles as well. So we've got a LinkedIn, a Facebook, a Twitter. Um, you can also do Instagram uh, and Google My Business. Category, this is very important. When you add this to the queue, the times that it goes out are based on this category. So as you know, when you set up your schedule, you define for each category when you want these to go out. So it's very important that you choose a category that makes sense. For this one, this actually is a blog post um, type that I'm sending to. So I'm going to leave blog posts because these are Mashable articles. Email me when published. Absolutely. I want to know when these actually go out. Requeue. This is the same feature that you've gotten used to. If you have evergreen content, like these are blog posts, so it is evergreen for a little while, you have all of these options that you normally have. So you can say until this many requeues, and let's send this two times. By then they kind of get stale. After two requeues, it's going to automatically expire these and remove them from your queue completely. Hold posts for your approval. Let's do this. This is different than a normal routing scheme where you would have an agent who, whose job it is to pump out content and then they have a boss, right? Some kind of supervisor, or maybe it's the client who wants that final sign off. As you know, when you set up that kind of an approval scheme, as soon as that person posts, that user posts, it's going to automatically send an email to whoever is assigned to approve their posts and let them know, please approve this. And that still works with this, but this is a different feature. When you see hold posts for your approval in the CSV import, Nobody is going to see this but you. So if even the person that's assigned to approve your posts, they won't see this because you might want to manicure exactly how each of these posts looks and just make sure they look good before your boss sees them. So this allows you to keep it private and it holds it there until you're ready to add it to the queue. It's still going to go to the queue, but it will be held for your approval. And I'll show you that in a minute. Trim tweets if needed. This is an important feature because if you leave this unchecked, if there is a tweet that with the message and the attached link and the attached image, all of that stuff put together exceeds 280 characters, it will skip that message just for the Twitter profile. However, if you leave it checked where trim tweets if needed is allowed, it will not skip your tweet. All it will do is reduce the size of your message. So it'll trim the characters of the message and make sure to maintain the integrity of your image URLs and your attached links. So all of those will definitely be included. It will just trim your message. I think we're ready to get going. This will fail. I just want to show you where it fails and how to correct it. So I'm going to click Add to Queue. So errors were detected. What it's going to ask you to do is download the log. So when you do that, just click the log and notice how it says row three, sorry, image URL slash video URL column in both uploading loading is not allowed. So what it's telling us is in the third row, which is right here on the spreadsheet. Um, and by the way, you can, you can add up to 500 posts at a time. So you can see why this is a critical, feature that we've added here. Imagine if you've got something on row 327, having to go through that manually looking for the error would be a real challenge. Now it tells you exactly where to go and what went wrong. So what I'm gonna do in this case is fix the problem. Let's delete that image URL so all we have is the video. That looks good to me. I'm going to export this to CSV again. Okay, let's call this new demo. I'm ready to upload again. Okay, let's look for a new demo. Okay, so now we have the new demo file. It still has all of my existing um, options set up here, and I'm gonna add this one to the queue. Let's see if this works.
you know it works when the green flag shows up at the top right. So this is what I'm looking for up here. It's for a positive message. Great, no errors found, all messages processed. I'm gonna to go to the queue and check it out. So here are all of my queue items. Notice that these are all the fresh ones, these five. These other ones have already been sent previously. So notice how they say they're held for your approval. Nothing will happen with these until you have a look, make sure you like the way it looks, and then you add your own approval to this. So um, as you can see, we've got some images here that are already attached. This one has two different images. And the way we did that was we have two, I'm gonna show you right now, Notice how this one has the first URL and then it has the second URL starting right here with just a comma and no spaces before or after. And the net result of that is two images attached to our post. So I'm gonna go in and show you what this looks like. I'm gonna edit this. So this probably looks very familiar. It's just like one of your normal posts that you manually typed out. It's smart enough to know that only the first image in LinkedIn gets posted, but Twitter and Facebook allow multiple posts. All of your requeue options are already selected and it's got your blog post already selected. So I could send this now, um, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, this one, this is a demo. So I'm gonna go back to queue and I wanna show you how it works. So for this one, this looks good. So what I'm going to do is go to actions and approve it. Remember, only I can see this post. But as soon as I approve it, what it's doing now, it's finding the next time to assign to it. Now it's going to add it to the queue based on the next time in the schedule and date. That's it. So now it just became a live post and it was assigned for each of the social networks, the proper date for this to send out based on my schedule for blog posts. It's as easy as that. So now if you just wanna approve all of these remaining ones, they will go out as well. As always, looking forward to seeing what you guys do with this. And if you have any comments or questions, you can always reach out to us over here. And we'd love to talk to you in chat. So let us know how it works for you guys. Thank you.